Welcome back. Uh, still the ballot right here on Plus TV Africa um, breakfast special. Uh, we are still talking about the election 2023 and the governorship and state houses of election, um, uh, state houses of assembly elections, which held on Saturday in some places on Sunday. Now, one of the uh, the major talking points as far as uh, the elections that held on Saturday are concerned. Uh, is a low voter turnout. Well, a low voter turnout was witnessed across the 28 states where elections were conducted in Nigeria uh, in the 2023 governorship and state houses of assembly polls. Uh, exactly three weeks ago, Nigerians went to the polls to elect their presidents, senators, and House of Representatives members. Now, out of a total of 93.47 million registered voters, only 249 or 224 rather uh, 0.9 million persons representing 26.72 percent uh, voted in the february 25 presidential and national assembly elections uh, following the postponement of the of the state level elections from march 11 uh, to 18 by the independent national electoral commission nigerians decided to come out again uh, to exercise their franchise, but the number of voters were not as high as that of February uh, 25. In Lagos State, which has over 7 million registered voters, according to a report um, by the Guardian newspaper, in some parts of the state, particularly in Festac, no voter was seen at some polling units as at 8.40 a.m. Meanwhile, the polls opened at 8.30 a.m. Now, in River State, uh, it was the same report in uh, the local government area that has the highest number of voters, Obi Akbo, uh, low voter turnout was reported. The electorate uh, said they were unhappy with the outcome of the February 25 election, hence the decision to stay away. Now, what are the reasons responsible for low voter turnout uh, in uh, that election? We're glad to have joining us uh, this morning to discuss this, a social uh, reformer, an author and thinker, um, Mr. Andy Akpotive, he joins us via the phone uh, from Port Harcourt River State. Andy, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lagos. Um, uh, so, uh, would you agree with this report that we've just put out that uh, the election in, in River State was, uh, was characterized by uh, very low voter turnout? Hello, Andy, can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? Can we? Yes, yes, I can hear you now, yes. Yes, I said, so if you say that, you can say anything that you know. You uh, know, despite last uh, Saturday that uh, they were not going to do like they did under the presidential uh, uh, and... Um, National Assembly elections that held on the 25th. As a matter of fact, there were a lot of people who were home. Um, there were some who were playing football. There were a lot of them who thought that uh, the it it was the process was already fait accompli. Um, if they did what they did in the you know uh, presidential and uh, state national assembly uh, election that they were sure that uh, it was going to repeat itself, you know, for the gubernatorial and the, and the uh, state houses of assembly, right? Um, so that's why a lot, of, a lot of people stayed out. I particularly went around, you know, um, a lot of places, a lot of polling units in River State, and found that uh, the people became, the words to use would be despondency and apathy. You know, they were very apathetic and desperate. Yeah. They'd rather just stay at home than to come out, according to some of them, waste their time. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I spoke to some analysts who, like yourself, you know, had some things to say about uh, the turnout. And one or two people uh, say, hey, Kofi, don't, don't use the word apathy. Use the word low voter turnout, because apathy will uh, mean that the voters are not interested in the election. Uh, but the person who said this to me said that he feels that, you know, voters, voters are interested in the election, but they 
uh, choosing not to come out, not because they're not interested. So do you agree with, with that, 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 that view, you know, that it's more of uh, you know, low turnout than apathy? So there's a lot of noise in the background, though. I would request that you tell your people to, you know, um, be calm with the noise in the background. However, if I get what you're saying, where you are actually saying that uh, should we not rather use the word low voter turnout than apathy? Uh, anybody who says that, I'm sure the person would should be referred back to the English dictionary to go and uh, look at the word apathy. Why would there be low voter turnout? That's what they should ask themselves first. People who voted 25th of February did not come out. And you say you should rather call it low voter turnout. What does that even mean? Mm. It is there's something that is sponsoring, quote and unquote, that is giving gusto, that is giving fire and fervor to the low voter turnout. And that is our party. The people are despondent. The people are tired of this rage, of this harm. You know, the people are tired. INEC has just simply come to do play, uh, play by their playbook, you know, um, dancing to the whims and caprices of executive governors and those in position. And that is what is giving favor to apathy. Anybody who says that needs to go and check the English dictionary of apathy. Why do people who yesterday, or why did people who yesterday, they came out of their own volition, nobody could have them to vote for a candidate that they believe was going to win, who had capacity. That candidate was rigged out. And you say it's low voter turnout. Why did they refuse to call? The reason is clear. It's because they, are, they don't have any faith in the process. Like the person who is talking to you now and their position, let me put it on record. I don't have any faith in this process. I have spoken to virtually all the radio stations. A few of them have called me and they have arranged interviews with me for the whole of this week now. I said to them before that it's going to be a sham until we go full digital, full electronic voting. We are deceiving ourselves that the PFAS was going to be a sham. Go on my Facebook post and say, I posted all these things. So a lot of them believe I'm a prophet now, and they're calling me to come and have interviews. It, was it not a sham? I should tell you the story of River State. My brother. Yes, uh, if, if you may, I mean, the, what, what's the story of River State and uh, that you feel affected the uh, voter turnout? My brother. Psychiatric route, I was there with my team and I saw that some boys came in and they were carrying ballot boxes into their buses. With, with, in my, my, when you say in, in Delta State or in Nigeria, we say with my crow crow eye. They were carrying it and you could do nothing, nothing. They were carrying everything into the, this, and the NEC officials were running. There were places where they were whooping people. Oh, my brother, don't let me speak about this thing. I am I'm sufficiently vexed over this charade that we call the election. And people will be announced winners. And they will be grandstanding that uh, we, we, are, we are the ones that own River State. We are the ones that own Lagos State. We are the ones that are on ground. You are not on ground, nothing. A lot of free and fair elections, and you will hear they will whoop you silly. Hmm. Um, uh, the the governor of River State, uh, in, you know, in an interview, uh, when he was asked about the, you know, the turnout and and all that, one of the things he he is quoted as saying is that um, people did not get some people did not get uh, who didn't get the result they wanted in the presidential election. Uh, they decided not to come out. Uh, um, and should, I, should I shut you, Kofi? I don't want to cut you. Do you know tank criers were everywhere, including on my street estate, saying that if you don't want to vote PDP, don't come out. Tank criers, we have recordings of it. If you don't want to vote PDP, don't come out. What are we talking about now? And somebody says there's low voters turnout. That person should be given some energy drink, you know. <laughs> There's no, no such thing like vote, low, low voters turnout. The people just decided that 
there is no need. If the police, the security officials, we see these things, they will permit it. If uh, INEC will see these things and we still count those results, why am I dissipating or wasting my strength to go? Let, let me tell you some of the things I will be saying today. Eh? Nigerian leadership, eh, they should just be selecting leaders. They should stop wasting hundreds of billions on this charade. They should just say every four years, eh, uh, a committee of uh, the wise men, according to them, should be selecting those who will be governors, who will be um, honorable, and they call themselves honorables. That's what's so, so disgusting. Distinguished gentle, distinguished senators and honorables. Honorables what? Honorables what? My okay. brother. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the presidential election. Oh, sorry, the run-up to the governorship election. And what role do you think, because you've talked about um, uh, town criers and uh, the, the community criers. I mean, I've, I've lived in Port Harcourt many years. You know, we know each other. I'm, I'm used to, um, I'm familiar with uh, the community, uh, um, you know, announcements where if they want to call for a meeting in an area in the morning, you could hear them ringing or hitting the gong. You know, they'll have a meeting that's also so person's house. And so it's something I'm familiar with. So you are saying that the community town criers or the town community criers went out in the morning at dawn to announce to people if you're not voting for PDP, stay at home. And I want you to talk about the, the threats of, uh, of intimidation, you know, threats of uh, harassment. You know what happened in Lagos State, where the chairman uh, government of a government committee, which is the Lagos State Parks and Garages um, uh, uh, Committee, uh, was on record a video you know, in a gathering of his supporters telling uh, people who will not vote for the APC in Lagos State not to come, to stay at home. This is a government appointee. Um, uh, the police, you know, public relations officer for headquarters of Abuja, the night before the election, came out to say that uh, you know, MC Oluomo was merely joking, you know, and that he thinks people will be free to... to, to <laughs> he said he was merely joking. You know, that he feels it was a joke and that, um, you know, Nigerians can vote free and free. Um, do you think all, all these things really went, how far do you think it went to, to discourage people from coming out? Because we're in show people were, some would say that they don't mind, they're still going to come out and, and vote. My brother, um, when you look at everything in this country, you'll be asking yourself if it's worth it. A lot of my friends and colleagues that have that bad call me almost every day and they say, is it worth it what you are doing in that country? And let me tell you, eh, a lot of sensible people, quote and unquote, and I don't mean to demean anybody, are beginning to consider just walking out of this country. It doesn't look like there is hope. Imagine police without investigation Excusing MC Oluomo, I don't say God Almighty. Like they are saying he was joking. We should take it that he was joking. Meanwhile, somebody on social media will say something that is not as weighty. You will run after him. You will arrest him and lock him up permanently. But an MC Oluomo will speak. I will speak in a manner that he has spoken. <laughs> hey, God. Kofi, let me tell you, it would take God to redeem this country. And I'm not being religious. It would take God himself to redeem this country. You see, I used to believe in restructuring, that if you just restructured Nigeria, things will work very well. You know, the, 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 the form we always control, we always control the, the, the content. Let me tell you, who are those who will even agree to that restructuring that I'm talking about? Did these people, these institutions, the ITPC, the ESCC, the police, the judiciary, the traditional institution, these filthy politicians, without any apology, are they the ones who are going to agree for a restructure in Nigeria to make Nigeria start working? These people, or is it the students, the NYC people, or Maybe. the apathetic 
Mm -hmm. or, or the cold fitted Nigerian citizens. Maybe, maybe the, the academia, <laughs> maybe the academia, you know, the university professors may be the ones to. The, the professors who are in the, who are helping to do this corruption. I, I don't understand. Who are the people, Kofi? I used to believe this. Somebody called me and said, Andy, what you are saying is very right. A restructured Nigeria is the way to go. But I want to ask you, Andy, who would start this process? Who among them? Have you forgotten the biblical days when God was asking um, 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 Abraham, if you will find this number of people, I will spare the city. He went, he couldn't find. God reduced it again. If you will find this number of people, I will spare the city. This is the same case in this country, oh my brother. Who are the people that will be found? Who can help to restructure this country? Who? Where are they? I don't want to be suggestive. Maybe just a few hands in the military. Mm. Who are they, other than in that, in that system, that are, that can, is it this corrupt politician? You know what they are doing across the country, Kofi? <laughs> From Delta State, to River State, to Lagos State, to the Northern State. You know what these politicians are doing? And they have the gumption to say they are on ground. Do you know that if he merely just restructured the electoral system to make it um, um, virtual, to make it electronic, do you know they will frustrate it? From the national assembly, they will frustrate it. They will tell you all kinds and manners of things because they are really not on ground. The people did them. I am on ground on River State as a civil society person, as an activist. The people speak to us almost every day. They do not want PDP. How do I say it again? PDP, they do not, PDP feels like an expired medication that is going to affect them. They do not want PDP. But if PDP is going to win, let's leave the rest. Mm. And, and the, some, some will say, and, uh, you know, I've always said that uh, if we restructure this country, um, there are fundamental underlying issues that need to be answered, need to be solved. And restructuring is simply merely restructuring Nigeria with its problems or restructuring the problems. And um, the restructured companies will still have those problems. You know, so I'm, I'm happy you have seen the light. <laughs> I'm happy you have seen the light. You know, we have fundamental issues. Andy, another, another you know, talking point in all this, um, some said, the conduct of the electoral umpire, INEC, and its ad hoc staff and, and those it called in from, from the, you know, the youth service corps, uh, the academia, universities, uh, people who are supposed to know that one plus one is equal to two. Uh, uh -huh. they, I mean, if anybody should know, they should know even more than that. You know, the Pythagoras theorem and all, they should know that perfectly. Um, <laughs> one plus one. But in this case, uh, we're seeing that uh, for these professors, um, zero plus one is equal to two, and one plus one is equal to zero, you know. Um, so, so, but INEC, you know, I performed abysmally in the presidential election, but the chairman of INEC met with the resident electoral commissioners early in March and then gave assurances that the beavers will be used and that, you know, that it will deliver this time around. It will deliver this time around. Um, what do you think was wrong, or what was it about what the um, chairman said um, that did not still encourage people to come out? So, Kofi, when you want to, when you try to get a job, um, after you have gone through the offer, they will give you job descriptions job specification, your key performance indicators, and all the other things necessary for you to do the job. You would look at it, and you will be measured against those things over a period of time, even when you're doing your appraisal. Where you are unable to meet those things, particularly if you said that you have got the CV to do those things, a serious company should fire you. 
INEC, we were not the ones who gave, him, gave them the marking scheme. That's why I have been very annoyed. They were the ones who prepared their own marking scheme. We didn't give it to them at Nigeria. Their marking scheme was prepared by them. They said this is going to be the modules of Randy for these elections. And we still have a Mahmoud sitting as an INEC chairman. It's not for a country like this. Should labor not even be on the street now calling for his fact? If we were a serious country, should the people not be calling for a sack? A person who failed by his own standard that he established for himself. I don't understand, though. How, how do they want our children to be now? When the children grow up, they'll be referring to these things. So you don't know. That, that's why you spank him in now. This exam, they gave it to me, and I failed. Your people, your generation, they gave themselves exams. They set the exam for themselves and they said, and you did not say anything. You did not whoop them. You did not punk them. You did not come on the street to talk about it. You did not go on radio to talk about it. And you are whooping me, daddy. These people, see, I have been sufficiently vexed. How that a Mahmoud would give himself marking skin. And they will come on air. Ah, nothing is not so small than this. And they and they excusing it, excusing it on logistics. Excuse me, you had four years, over three hundred billion, and you have the gumption to tell us logistics. What is what? What do these people think we are, Kofi? Anyway, it's not their fault. The entire Nigerians they have taken hook line, sinker, the river the boats, all the excuses that have been presented us by INEC and the government. Otherwise, if we were serious people, we would say the money is not Buhari's money. The money we give to you people is not your people's money. It's our money. You have failed, Mr. Yakub Mohammed. Oh, what right is that it's called? This is without a, a ridiculing his person. You have failed. Resign. Walk away. You have failed from the presidential to this one. You couldn't think through a process that is foolproof. A process that has this system within it that would make it and, and, and discover the possible errors and would guide against those possible errors. You couldn't think through it with over 300 billion. It seemed to me like all the INEC officials or uh, whatever, when they get in there, they are just thinking about procurement. Procurement, procurement, procurement. How am I going to make money out of this system? Oh, the first one they say is card reader. Okay, let's get one thing that they call card reader. Government will think that it's a game changer. They will give us money. Uh, after that one, what has happened to the card reader now? Okay, now it's beaver, so uh, let's uh, procurement, procurement, let's uh, get uh, beaver. Uh, after now, I don't know how we come again, though. No. He will tell us it's confirmers, 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 confirmers trick. That's what they are using in Netherlands. It's confirmers. They will bring around 500 billion. Come on, come on. Okay, um, there is, there, there, we, we really need to fix this country. Mm. And in fixing this country, we can't be tokenistic. We can't be we can't be massaging this wound. The wound in this country, in the medical parlance, is a gangrenous wound. You can't be using red and yellow caps on it. You can't be using a uh, cutting wool on it. It's gangrenous. You have to excavate this wound to the very bottom. Okay. Uh, uh, if you don't excavate it, yeah. uh, the uh, wound is yeah. going to result into an amputation. Yeah, Andy, we'll, we'll go over to the wound because um, that's a very important thing to talk about, how to, to heal this wound. Um, uh, for those who felt disillusioned, disappointed, and didn't have any faith in the electoral process um, because of what happened on the 25th of February in River State, I keep calling, saying it on this program and everywhere I have the chance, that what happened in River State, for instance, um, just as an example, 
uh, of other states uh, um, was nothing, you know, was nothing, you know, less than broad daylight robbery. I don't know if you can hear me, Andy, but um, can, can, can the voters also who stayed at home take some blame? Uh, because some will say it's, it's, more, it's more difficult for anyone who wants to rig to do so when you have the massive turnout that we had on the 25th of February. And the voters, you know, did themselves, they didn't help themselves by, by staying at home. They should have still come out in their numbers. Anybody who says that does not, would be said not to understand who these Nigerian politicians are. If I took off the battery in a vehicle and I gave you the car key to go and move that car, would that car move? People who already started stealing beavers, people who already went about in estates saying don't come out, the owners of violence, don't come out against not voting for PDP. Wait, so if, if a Chukudi comes out, uh, Kofi, or an Angela comes out, you have a system that will protect them. Who do you have that will protect you? This police. I bet let's say something else. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Andy, before we go, um, what's the way forward? Um, uh, you know, those who, I mean, if you, I'm sure we've had conversations before and you've heard uh, me say that uh, democracy can't fix this country. Um, not because I don't believe in democracy, but because there are fundamental issues that need to be sorted, sit down, we discuss, we fix those things, and then we start. Um, do you, with what's happened now, still have confidence in, in democracy, uh, the current kind of democracy we're practicing, to solve the issues of the country? Some have said, oh, we write the constitution, oh, we'll have restructuring. Um, uh, are, you, are you confident that the, the current arrangement can, can, can sort things out? Kofi, you need to be somebody who speaks it exactly as it is. I have um, continued to maintain. If you go on my Facebook post, you will see a lot of it, that Nigeria is not right for a democracy. And some people will just think that I'm talking gibberish. I said we need a benevolent dictator. And I don't mean words when I say Anybody who sits in his comfort and says, ah, I'm just talking rubbish, trust me, that person has not experienced our own brand of democracy. A people would have to be conscientized, educated, up to a level for a democracy to work. Trust me, that. people need to even be taught what it takes to choose a good candidate. Get 10 good candidates are standing for election. What if you need to look out for that are beyond tribal sentiment, religious sentiment, ethnocentric sentiment, greed sentiment? What are the things you need to look out for before democracy would work? Otherwise, democracy is about the people, essentially. If you have more people who are not educated, and when I say educated, I don't mean only classroom education who are not evenly educated, living in a society, and an idiot stands for election, who doesn't have capacity to deliver? But because it's of their faith, are you aware that in that community they will vote for that idiot? So I have said that, like you have in China, like you have in some societies that are, that are doing well, particularly societies where the population is so large, we can evolve a brand of government that is different from this democracy. Democracy is too expensive. Democracy is not supposed to be foisted on, you know, a, a, a population that is, and I don't want to be very down with the citizens of this country, but a population that is largely uneducated from the north to the south, east and the west. How can you be for pushing democracy down their throat? Kofi simply put, a benevolent dictator is the solution to this quagmire. A benevolent, you know, once upon a time, 
Nnamdi Azikiwe spoke about a diarchy. Go read it. Go, go read his work on diarchy. Until such a time when we have evenly educated the population. We have brought, we have taken them out of poverty. Not that we are still the poverty capital of the world. Even though India, China, their population is almost times like hundred of our population, we are still the poverty capital. And you want democracy to work? When they dangle a few carrots on your neck or, or, or your nose, I mean, what is it called? And you are aware that you are going to, you are going to move. According, why do you think? Buhari and the CBN governor, we are insisting on this uh, Naira issue because they are part of the system and they understand how they have been winning elections. That's the about money. And if they do not do this, they will use money to corrupt the people, even those who, use, who know a bit. The professors, like you have said, they will use money to corrupt them. Therefore, before that time, when we all, or largely, have moved from this quadrant of a poverty-stricken people, this quadrant of illiteracy, mass illiteracy, this quadrant of disease, this quadrant of disease, we have moved from that level. According to Abraham Maslow, we, as a people, cannot do well with democracy. Abraham Maslow, as I continue, as I round of said, that mass needs are in hierarchy. At the lowest rung is physiological needs. Nothing motivates a man who is on that level other than those items under physiological needs, like food, shelter, clothing, sex, and all that. And you know what's more interesting about that theory? It is until those are satisfied, nothing else will motivate a man. But as soon as those are satisfied, those things under the physiological triangle no longer act as motivators. It now gets to the next level, the next level of safety needs. From there, it gets to the next level of self-esteem. From there, it gets to the next level of social needs and self-actualization. What am I saying, in other words? The large majority of Nigerians are still on the wrong of physiological needs. They are still battling with food, shelter, clothing, and how they are going to attend to their health. The people who are battling with these things can therefore not be motivated by other things, other askings that democracy needs. It is the people who are on the social needs, self-esteem needs, that can be motivated by the askings of democracy. Therefore, be like China and get a few class of people who will continue to preside over this country, who have the interests of the country at heart for as long as it takes to take the people out of that level to the next level. This is my recommendation. Unless and until we do this, we will just be wasting resources every four years, wasting lives every four years. This is the truth, the truth in explicity, explicity in verbosity. All right, Andy, what can you say to the Nigerian voter? Um, there's uh, other elections coming up. We have the off-cycle elections, state elections in Imo, Kogi, Ekiti, and other states. And then we have future elections in 2024, um, uh, sorry, in 2027. Um, if the the courts cancel some elections and then they have to, uh, you know, we have to do fresh elections, I don't know where the money is going to come from. Um, but but people will still have to come out of vote. Are we are we in danger of sliding back, you know, to the days of of the real voter apathy? What can you say? What 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 reason do Nigerian voters have to come out again in the future? <laughs> Beautiful question, yeah, man. There is really nothing that motivates anybody to come out. I cannot even say to Nigerians right now and that uh, uh, these are just uh, uh, teaching challenges. Teaching challenges forever. Nothing democracy forever. We are just not ready. I cannot say to any voter or anybody with uh, 
permanence to that card that uh, Anja Kutile is assuring me in a vote will count. Assuring what? The system has been corrupted from top to bottom. Hmm. It has been seriously corrupted. We should not waste our time wasting our money, 300 billion, 500 billion, budgeting for it. Stopping the, the economy of the country for days. We should not waste our time. Eh? Kofi, we shouldn't waste our time. We shouldn't take lives. Do you know people, lives were lost in River State because of the election? You killed people? Come on. No need to waste our time, my dear. You can't even say, tell people to come out, Andy. Um, I mean, Nothing. they sh shouldn't come out next time. We shouldn't, until they change the system. Don't waste your time. Andy Akpotiva, thank you very much. Uh, social reformer, author, and thinker. I appreciate your time. You joined us via phone from the beautiful city of Port Hackett. And uh, do have yourself a wonderful day. Still, the ballot right here on The Breakfast. Um, we will take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about election violence, voter suppression, the role it played in the 2023 governorship and state houses uh, of assembly elections right here on Plus TV Africa. We'll be right back.